stand on the debate? Is this uh, just a minor correction for NVIDIA or the beginning of uh, a more bearish run for the stock looking ahead? So, you know, there's a lot of comparisons being drawn between NVIDIA and what happened in the dot-com boom, especially with the likes of Cisco. And, you know, at some point, there will be an end to this bullishness. But I do think that right now in the entire AI ecosystem, where you have visibility on sales and earnings, I think that is still the space to be. And irrespective of competition, I do think there are companies that are benefiting from this investment in CapEx. And to that extent, I do think this sell-off across the broad semiconductor space, uh, AI-related names, is still an opportunity. Because I do think the earnings visibility is very strong at this point in time. What do you think uh, the, the sharpness and the speed of the sell-off tells you about positioning? And again, just before you came on, we put, up, we put up a chart showing that NVIDIA had actually witnessed its highest weekly inflow into the stock uh, before this uh, major sell-off occurred a couple of days ago. So do you think that the fact that we've had such a sharp pullback is just a reflection of how frothy positioning is right now? Absolutely. Look, I think, you know, <clears throat> on our calculations, uh, NVIDIA's stock had overshot what we would say as a reasonable value for the company's stock. And so to that extent, you, you clearly see this where positioning increases. You also had a huge options expiry last Friday. So clearly there was a positioning element to it. And of course, you could argue whether it's profit taking or risk management, and uh, I think this is a healthy correction. Now, you know, this is a stock where it has seen a massive increase, uh, not just on a year-to-date basis, but over the last 12, 13 months. And so from that perspective, I think you've got to put the decline in that context. Of course, it attracts the most attention, you know, having briefly become the most valuable company by market cap. Uh, and, and so to that extent, it gathers a lot more attention, but we, we think, you know, the earnings in the company, the trajectory, the opportunities so that. Yeah, I was reading a note out of Morgan Stanley Research yesterday, uh, and they were saying that over a rolling one month time horizon, breadth in the market is as narrow as it's been going back to 1965. It's just a handful of stocks. We know that that's driving the outperformance of these equity indices. So if you see the likes of NVIDIA start pulling back, what does it mean for broader equities, given the narrowness of this market? Absolutely. Look, breadth has been, I would say, weak for a while. I think the much discussed Magnificent Seven have been driving uh, this market. And, you know, there was a period where if I go back to, let's say, about three weeks ago, you had literally NVIDIA as a single stock outperforming even the Magnificent Seven, right? So there is a narrowness that does, you know, obviously, if you see a large correction in some of the uh, bigger names, that does cause a uh, correction overall in the market. But, you know, our focus is always on not looking at the market in its totality, but looking at where are the growth opportunities. And if there are companies that are able to deliver on sales and earnings, which we think is the most important factor, mm -hmm. that's where the opportunities are going to be. So to some extent, mm -hmm. the reason why the market was driven narrowly was because these were the companies that have the visibility on earnings. Yeah. I, I, and again, you know, most of these stocks are, are growth stocks. So one question that I want to put to you is how you think the stronger dollar may affect the trajectory of, from here for some of these growth stocks, especially since so many, so many of them derive their income from abroad. What does the stronger dollar do? Look, unless we see a massive change in the currency, I think at this point in time, the top line trajectory is strong enough to offset that. Uh, I'm not, you know, talking about a very substantial step change in currency values, which we don't think is a likely outcome. So to that extent, I, I think it's a little bit of a sideshow in terms of impacting earnings. Uh, the rate of growth that we're talking about, the growth companies, is far, far stronger than what the currency uh, offset is going to be. Mm. So then what other equity opportunities are you considering? I think you've articulated how you're thinking about U.S. equities pretty well. I see uh, you're talking to us from India. We saw a bit of a shakeout post-elections, but of course it's fully recovered now. Is India a market that you like? 
Yeah, amongst the you know emerging market space, uh, that is really the one standout opportunity. And once again, you know, we we I, I know you had an emerging market expert talking about on the show a short while ago. And uh, our view is that you can't look at emerging markets in its entirety, but you have to look at where are the growth opportunities. And I think the clearest growth opportunity that you're seeing in Indi- in the emerging market spaces in India. And elections are something which have historically not had a huge role to play. They obviously have short-term impacts, but ultimately it's the underlying growth trajectory, which is what attracts us to the Indian market.